Hi guys, it is Sydney B. Turner here and I am back with another video. It has been a couple weeks since I have posted and I do apologize for that. I've had this footage for the last few weeks and just have not had the time or the um, cooperation of Adobe Premiere Pro for a while. <laughs> So this footage was filmed right after my last video, which is my studio vlog, and so the palette and everything is all the same as in that video. So if you did not already see that video, go ahead and watch that first. So in this video, I went on a little bit of a plein air adventure at a studio to plein air workshop hosted at the Rooney Mead Arboretum and Sculpture Garden in Center Hall, P Pennsylvania. Um, and the host artist was Susan Nicholas Gephardt. She's amazing. Highly recommend. Um, so this was a studio to plein air class focusing on oil painting and pastel. There were mainly pastelists there, um, but there were some oil painters, a couple of which I knew. But yeah, so this workshop was a lot of fun. It was very relaxing. Um, I was there helping out set up for the workshop and doing some film work for the workshop too, which you will see eventually if you follow Susan Nicholas Gephardt on her Facebook page. And she also got started on YouTube now. Um, she has a new video up, so go check that out. I'll link that, I, actually, I'll link that information down below for you guys because I think it's worth checking out. And there's a lot of other photos and stuff of the workshop if you wanted to check that out as well. So if you're a local um, of Central Pennsylvania, you've probably heard of Rooney Mead at one point. Um, they do a lot of different things, um, art related, uh, wellness related, they do a lot of fitness classes like yoga, they have goat yoga there too. <laughs> That's right, they have goat yoga at this place, uh, which is pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so it's a gorgeous property, there's an orchard, there's a whole bunch of stuff there, and just some wonderful artwork, and a big old house which is really cool with tons of paintings in it. So if you like art and like being out in nature, you gotta visit this place if you're in central Pennsylvania. And I will leave their website um, down below. They have a lot of really pretty pictures and other events and stuff that they do. And they're open to public on the weekends from 10 to 4, Saturday and Sunday, through summer into fall, I think. I think the schedule changes as the year goes on. But that's, that's what I know right now. So this workshop was a lot of fun for me. It was a nice little plein air adventure. And I actually got to test out a bit more of the homemade panels that I made for oil painting. And if you didn't see that video, this is the same panel that I was making in that video. Um, so I'll link that in the cards for you guys if you're curious of how I made them. And uh, the nice thing that I realized about these panels and the surface that I used is that they're very easy to correct mistakes on in the beginning stages, which I did many, many times in this video. You'll see me like painting something and then wiping it out and then painting something and wiping it out, um, trying to figure out the composition. And the reason why I struggled with this so much was because I didn't do a thumbnail sketch, um, which I should have. <laughs> I should be. I should know to do that by now, um, but I'm still working on it. So a thumbnail sketch is just a small sketch um, that you do before you start painting, usually in plein air, um, just to get the composition right, get a feel for your subject, figure out what view, what things you're gonna put into the composition or edit out of the composition. Um, one of the big challenges of plein air painting is deciding what to keep and what not to keep. And that's what I struggled with, with <laughs> continually wiping out uh, my little panel and then repainting it. And I should, I could have avoided all of that struggle with a, a couple good little thumbnail sketches. And the view, there's the view that I was painting from, is gorgeous. So you can see I had a lot of material to go from to paint from, but it was very hard to pick something. Um, so I keep going back and forth and back and forth, and finally I settled on a lower horizon line, which did help the painting. So if you guys didn't see my other video, I just did a um, my plein air sketch kit um, video. And that is the type of setup that I should have brought with me <laughs> to make my thumbnail sketches. It would have made life a lot easier. So always do a thumbnail sketch, whether you're new or an experienced plein air painter, because it does make a big difference and saves you a lot of time and a lot of frustration. So there's the palette that I was using. As you can see, I probably have a lot more colors than most people would put out on their plein air palettes. And that's because I have trouble deciding what I like. <laughs> I've gone through a ton of different color variations, different palettes, different blues, of pre-mixed colors, mixing my own pre-mixed colors, um, buying different colors, different pigments to mix in the stuff, and I still haven't figured out what I like best to work with. So I usually end up bringing a palette of about 17, 15, 17 or so colors, which sounds insane, 
Um, and it kind of is, but that's okay because so far that's kind of how I liked to paint. Um, and here I'm mixing a lot of blues and I just got a couple new blue colors that I will link down below because they are amazing. Um, number one color that I used in this painting is a, a King's Blue Deep by Michael Harding and I absolutely love this color and I love the Michael Harding paints. I have three tubes of it so far and I am hooked. Um, so if you're looking for the beautiful rich blue color that is really the exact color that a Pennsylvania sky is during the summer. It really, it, like, I used it straight off the tube right towards the end of this painting, actually. Then please check that paint out. A couple other brands uh, do make that color, like Rembrandt, and I do love my Rembrandt paints as well. Um, but this King's Blue just is perfect. I don't see why I'd want to switch it out. Another color that I used in the first couple layers of this, which you'll notice here in this scene, is a purple color, and that is a Gamblin Manganese Violet, and I love this color. Um, Susan Nicholas Gephardt actually got me on this color when I first started, and ever since she introduced it to me, it's like my new uh, like secret weapon for greens. And the reason that I like using this purple, this specific purple with greens, is because it really plays well with warmer greens and really helps the foreground pop forward, which is something that I've always struggled with in all of my paintings. So there I'm like wiping out the sky again because I really want more white to show. And if you've followed me for a while, you may notice that I use a lot of gray. And sometimes I will actually tone my panels and stuff with gray color before I even start. And that's because I like working on a neutral surface, just like my palette is. Um, so I can tell the values better and it just is easier on the eyes, especially when you're outside. Like as you can see, I'm getting dappled with sun here under this tree, um, which was a little bit annoying and kind of threw, threw me off a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. But for this time, I just stuck with white panels and that's just because I um, didn't even think about it the night before. I was, you know, I was, <laughs> as you, if you saw my other studio vlog, you would know what I was doing and know the incredibly huge task that I was trying to accomplish that night. Um, but, <laughs> but yes, and I, I completely forgot about it, and I kind of wish I did because I feel like that first sketch would have been a lot more effective if I had a neutral background to go off of instead of trying to judge my mid-range values against the white panel. Uh, which can some guys sometimes throw your panel off because usually you don't want to start with straight white because that is your highest value. You can't go any lighter, any um, higher than white. Um, so that's a little tip for you. To, uh, definitely try toning your canvases, especially if you're just starting out because it really does help. And sometimes adding some colors like a burnt sienna under um, color tone can really help bring out other colors and I think the next time that I come out to this property I'm gonna try that. I've also been experimenting a little bit with purple um, undertones and um, yeah toning the panels purple um, which I didn't do in this video but I'll talk about in another one if I ever get to filming it. But overall I really had fun with this painting and I, w I might do a full-length video of most of the process um, I actually did a second one right after this painting, which is not in, going to be in this video. Uh, but if you're interested in seeing that, let me know. So if you're a plein air painter, um, sometimes the best thing you can do is just to go at it. And even though I didn't do a thumbnail sketch and I was kind of being funky about my panels and picking colors and stuff, it still was a lot of fun. And I only used a couple small brushes for this um, entire painting, which was really challenging. And by the way, the brush that I'm using is from Rosemary & Co. And I'll have that link down below um, because I really, I have a whole set of their brushes and they're amazing. The sky I found was really difficult for me because I know it was blue, but like the clouds kept moving. And if you saw it like earlier in the video, those clouds are just whipping past and it was really moving that day. It was gorgeous out, but it was a little bit confusing for me to paint. Clouds and skies are something that I've been working on lately, and I'd like to work with them more. So yeah, that was my weekend planner adventure. If you guys enjoyed this video, please uh, leave a like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell to get notified when a new video gets put up. And if you're interested in any of the products that I'll mention, I'll try to link as many as possible down below.
I also have some exciting news, um, guys, that I should have mentioned in the beginning of the video, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm actually a Amazon affiliate and a uh, Blick Art Materials affiliate now, which means all the links in my description of my videos and everything that are from Blick or from Amazon are affiliate, meaning that when you purchase something from one of those links, I get a very tiny portion of that um, for you know, sending that link to you guys. Um, so if you're ever interested in any of the supplies, I encourage you, if you would like to, to purchase from those links. It really does help out. And there's the finished piece for you guys to see. And thank you so much for watching, and thank you for all the support that you guys have given me throughout my start of YouTube and Patreon and everything. It is amazing. You guys are awesome. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.